Dear students, we continue with our case study and this is the third part of the case study. In this part, we will see how the 10MMS can actually help in identification of the proteins. You know that 10MMS or MS2 helped us to measure the molecular weights of the uh, fragments, the peptides. They came from the intact protein and that it was, uh, the protein was charged using ESI. In the case of the 10MMS, we can uh, utilize the peptide sequence tags that are formed as a result of the data output from the mass spectrometer. So in this part, we will see how these peptide sequence tags can actually help us in the search process. So the basic philosophy, as you already know, in the peptide sequence tags is that those fragments that are coming out from the intact protein, which differ from each other by just one amino acid, they can be used to obtain the identity of that specific amino acid. So in this way, if multiple fragments were to be there, which were one amino acid apart, you could actually identify all of those amino acids. So this is what we're going to utilize in this example. So consider a random protein sequence from the database given here and that if this protein were to be fragmented at the first site so it will leave only one amino acid with the n terminus fragment and so many other about nine amino acids on the c terminus fragment so if this were to be to happen and another molecule of the same protein in the mass spectrometer's chamber were to be fragmented at the second location, C2 and Z9, then you would have C2 and C1's mass reported by the mass spectrometer. So if you subtract the mass of C1 from C2, you will obtain the molecular weight of amino acid A, alanine. Similarly, if some other molecule of the same protein were to be fragmented at site number 3, you will end up with two peptides, one with three amino acids, that is MAF, while the, the C-terminus amino acid with the remaining eight amino acids. Now, if you were to subtract the mass of C2 from C3, you will obtain the molecular weight of the amino acid F. So, in this way, you can obtain those amino acids that are there within the difference of the peaks. And if you join these amino acids, you can form the peptide sequence tag. So in this case, let me write the peptide sequence tag for you. MAF is the peptide sequence tag that has been formed after exploring the data coming out from these fragments. So in this way, you obtained the peptide sequence tag and the next step was just to search this peptide sequence tag in the protein or peptide databases and those proteins or peptides that contained MAF will be shortlisted. So this will act as a second filtration step after MS1 and the peptide sequence tags will help you give uh, clues about the original protein that was there in the sample. So once you filter the database for MS1, the monoisotopic mass of the intact protein, then you can apply a second filter, that is the uh, peptide sequence tags, and you can further uh, shorten the peptide, uh, the candidate protein list.